Your Honor, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I come before you to present my case against living in the country. First, some background. When, I, when my oldest sister was born, my parents lived in Los Angeles, a big city. And as I heard it growing up from my mother, there were cases of random gunfire, car accidents, crazy people, and even an incident where the house they were living in at the time was broken into and robbed in the middle of the night while they were sleeping. They woke to hear the sounds and luckily no one was injured, but some valuables were taken. And so at, you know, these stories were shared as we were growing up and this was given as the reason that by the time I came along, we were living in Illinois in farm country, about 10 miles outside of the town of 526 people. And so I'm here to present my case that despite what many of you also probably believe, that the grass is not greener in the country, that there are, there are issues with the countryside as well, and it's not, it's not a place to escape to. So, my first point in my case. One summer day I was outside playing basketball, shooting hoops, <laughs> and out of the sky, a bird falls and hits the building that the hoop was attached to, slides down, lands on the ground not too far away from me, and it was a little surprising, but not too surprising, after I examined the bird and found the bullet hole wound. <laughs> <laughs> there were some hunters in a field nearby, and they had been taking shots of beer and whiskey, apparently. We found the bottles <laughs> later. <laughs> and I don't remember exactly how long it was before I heard it, but we heard someone yelling, Help! Help! I shot him! Call an ambulance! Oh, God. <laughs> well, luckily for the fellow who was shot, my parents knew what to do. Having lived in L.A., they had some experience. <laughs> <laughs> but they were able to stop the bleeding, and, and he survived. And, and luckily for him, he was shot in probably the best place for anyone to take a, a gunshot at close range, Illinois. far away from any vital organs. <laughs> he probably didn't sit down for a while, but, but he survived. So all, all, all ended well. And so for my second point to my case, when I was in seventh grade, uh, a teacher that lived nearby would stop by on his way to school each morning and pick up my sister and I and drive us to school. And one particular morning when I was outside waiting for him to arrive, I saw him not stop but coast on by. And you'd have to understand that our driveway had a blind spot as you approached it. And there was a window, sort of like landing on an aircraft carrier where you had to commit to turning into the driveway or abort and pull off. And this is the maneuver that he performed that particular morning. He pulled on down the road and apparently the people behind him, seeing his brake lights as they came out of the blind spot, were a little surprised and overreacted and slammed on the brakes and the cars, the two cars trailing, hit each other, turned into oncoming traffic, which included an 18-wheeler and uh, there was another pickup trailing the 18-wheeler that slammed into that, and two other sedans came from either side and collided into what was now a huge pile of cars. <coughs> so here I was, I stepped outside and not 30 feet away, you know, er, crash, boom, bam, big pile of cars. And still, to this day, the biggest accident I've ever personally witnessed, despite having lived in many metropolitan areas full of <laughs> dangerous traffic. And luckily, you know, everybody did okay. I don't think anybody was killed. But so much for guns and dangerous crap traffic. Uh, and so for the third point to my story here, uh, I was, uh, make sure I'm on track here. So, yeah. One summer day when I was quite a bit younger, my siblings and I were playing in the yard. There was five of us, by the way. and. Again, I, I think I mentioned we were 10 miles outside of a small town of 526 people out in the country, and a man wandered by asking for a glass of water. You know, it was a hot day, and when you live in the country, if someone wanders by and asks for a glass of water, you get them a glass of water. One thing led to another, and 
this fellow was threatening my father with violence if he wouldn't drive him to Rockford about two hours away. Well, my father, undoubtedly wanting to get this person away from his family, agreed to do it. And after he left, my mother called the police. Well, turns out the police were looking for this fellow because he had escaped from a mental hospital <laughs> 30 miles down the road the other direction. <laughs> and all, well, all ended well. Uh, the police intercepted them in the small town not too far away, and, and everybody was safe in the end. But again, you know, the, the guns, the dangerous traffic, and the crazy people <laughs> were all encountered in, in the country. <laughs> I could go on, you know, bomb threats, robbery, I have lots more evidence, but <laughs> my time is running short. So, clearly, my, my points back up my case. You may find some of my evidence to be a little anecdotal, and perhaps, you know, you might find me a little supercilious, <laughs> but I feel my case clearly backs up my argument that the grass is not always greener in the country. Your Honor, 